Hey sign folk, uh, welcome back. Uh, week number two, uh, working on my sandblast cabinet and uh, sandblasting and uh, sandblasting sign endeavor. Uh, made a little bit of progress. Um, I got my lights in the cabinet. I think I got everything plugged and plumbed up and everything seems to be working okay. Um, I did some test cuts and actually did a little bit of blasting and actually um, did this little sign here, like I said, and I'm still experimenting, but uh, there you go. So um, I've also got this other one that we're going to try out, but um, so I'm going to start with the sandblast cabinet first. And so um, I obviously you had to upgrade the lighting from the stock cabinet. Um, oh gee, where did it go? Let's go here. So this is the original lighting that comes with the Harbor Freight cabinet. Um, it's just a five volt um, LED um, light that goes. Uh, it basically it, it goes. It kind of mounts up to the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see it there. Um, you see there's two clamps there, so that's where the light originally goes. And uh, it just wasn't bright enough. I assume that once you start blasting and uh, you know it gets real dusty and everything in here, that uh, this is going to have to be upgraded. And this is one of the um, many upgrades that the cabinet actually gets. So um, what I did is I actually have a local local LED light su supplier. And uh, so I walked in there and kind of told them, you know, I need um, some LED strips. And so this is what they gave me. Um, I have two uh, two foot uh, LED. These are 5000 K lights. And the great thing about these is that they are magnetic. So if I need to, uh, you know, adjust the lighting, um, it's really, really easy to do. So it uh, works really, really well. Um, so those are actually, I don't know if you could see back there. So I've got a, a positive and a negative that runs from this side. And I have a positive and a negative that runs from this side. And it's tied into one wire that feeds back out of the cabinet. That wire runs back out here to this little transformer that's wired up to a switch that I uh, wired up and just gets plugged in the outlet. Works really, really well. See how bright that is. It uh, it actually works really, really good. Um, so with the lighting upgraded, um, got plenty of light and I can actually kind of move it around. The next thing I had to do was um, dump in a little bit of um, grit or abrasive uh, blasting media. And so I used this from tractor supply it was the black diamond um geez what is it the uh i don't know if there's any specs on here but the only thing that they give is a 2040 quarter inch nozzle um my nozzle i don't think is really that big i would say it's probably more along the lines of well no maybe it's quarter i don't know so anyways i got that all situated uh, compressor seems to be working okay. It's not too god awful loud in here. Um, you know, it's going to run. And um, so now that I got all that stuff set up and I went back over to getting my resist media. So there's my roll of its anchor sandblast media. It's a, uh, essentially it's just a rubberized, um, adhesive media. It, uh, you know, you cut it out with your plotter. It's, it's, it's kind of stretchy. It doesn't really like to go back to its original shape, but, uh, this is, uh, this is what I started off with. This is not the right stuff to use. And I'll explain that here in a second. Um, so when I started all of this, um, what material that I'm using this is the Anchor Sandblast, the 8482 stencil, uh, hashtag two, I'm sorry, T227, 22 mil smooth paint and glass, medium tack. That's where I messed up. Uh, you should get a high tack for um, doing the sandblasted signs. And I learned that kind of the hard way. So um, getting my plotter kind of set up and dialed in. Uh, it took me, I don't know, you can't see them all here, but it took me 12 tries to adjust the blade and get the force right. 
So with my settings on my plotter, I'm using a 60 degree blade and it sets out there about an eighth of an inch. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not an eighth of an inch. It, it sticks out there pretty good. Um, you can kind of see that, see how far I've actually got it set. And you're going to have to adjust, you know, yours accordingly. So, um, what I also had to do was, I just went ahead and put this in there. So I run my force at 26 on my cutter. Uh, it worked well for me. It seemed to cut out fine. So cutting this stuff being that it's super thick, it's like really, really stretchy, but, uh, it seems to weed. Okay. You know, it's not perfect. I, and I guess, you know, doing some of this stuff, you're going to have to take into consideration the size of the fonts and, um, you know, just the cutability of some of the real thin, super, super thin stuff. So I'm trying to weed this with one hand and it seems to work. Okay. As you can see, it just kind of, kind of weeds away. There we go. So, and it's, again, like I said, I could tell when I was weeding this, I'm like, this stuff really isn't that aggressive. So, but what I did is I just took it and I used uh, my regular high tack um, application tape, um, you know, just put it over top of it and then went over to my, um, to my HDU and tried to transfer it. Well, there's not enough adhesive on this, hence I ordered the wrong material because it should be a high tack. Um, and I really couldn't get this. Um, to transfer correctly. So what I did for the time being is I have uh, This is the R tape. This is the clear choice. This is the AT60 um, which is the medium tack as opposed to high tack um, And I put that on there which which really helped out a lot um, and I got that all transferred out. So um, If you're watching this and you're wondering where to start high tack um, adhesive for doing majority of whatever you're doing. Now, I assume that there was a super smooth surface like glass and whatnot, it would probably work out a lot better. Um, but because of the, because the poor surface of the HDU, um, it takes a little bit more adhesive for the stuff to grab a hold of. So, uh, okay. So, and this is what I got to transfer. So this is a painted, um, it's already primed and painted. It's got some one shot white on it. Um, and this actually stuck Okay. I mean, it wasn't, I had to fight it a little bit. It wasn't like, you know, put it on, take it right back off and actually had to fight it a little bit. But anyways, um, so actually I did two of these, um, one, just a sample, just to kind of get an idea with air pressure, um, of, uh, what I needed with the media that I'm using. And, uh, that being said, I'm, I'm running about, let's see here. I think I'm running, running about 50 pounds of air pressure. And what I found out is um, anything, I mean, I suppose you could, you could use more, but you got to move a little bit faster. Because I'm new, I have less air pressure, um, and I can't really control the media. At least I haven't tried to control the media um, coming out of the nozzle. So I'm trying to slow the process down by air pressure, which seemed to work pretty good. There are some deep areas in here, um, but you know, overall it, it, uh, it didn't do too bad. And I think this probably took me literally two minutes to do this. Um, and excuse the paint job. I just literally, uh, threw some gold paint on there and, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of, uh, you know, what the results can be. So, um, with this one, I'm actually going to throw it in the blast cabinet and I'm actually going to sandblast this one. So I'm going to keep the camera rolling. Um, while I'm doing this, uh, the air compressor may kick on, but I'll probably throw some music in there just for your entertainment pleasure. So next we're going to get this loaded in and, uh, get the camera set up and sandblast. I'm going to get the side door shut, sand it. The compressor is on. And I'm sure it's going to kick on here in a little bit, um, but essentially get my hands in here and get this so that way you can actually see it. Hopefully you can see me blasting this and uh, so all you got to do is just kind of hit the foot pedal and uh, start blasting.
it takes it a little bit to get through that paint. Um, but once it gets through the paint, it goes pretty quick. Now that that's done, um, again, like I said, the, the compressor doesn't cycle that much. I don't think it's that loud. Um, it doesn't really bother me that much. To some people, yeah, they just may not like the noise, but it doesn't really bother me. So, uh, up and make sure. So, I can see, even though that there's some foam back in here, there's a lot of crap that, that collects. There's a lot of crap that collects underneath there back in here and it kind of falls down to the ground um when i was blasting even though that this baffle this baffle is in here i had all sorts of uh media back there that uh it won't focus focus on the wrong thing uh that fell back here and so i plugged that one with some duct tape and i also plugged this one until i get my hose run to the dust deputy um but uh yeah so it's not the cleanest uh it still needs some sealing but uh essentially you know it still works it's pretty pretty good there so there's our little sandblast and generally i you get about an eighth of an inch um generally gives the the, the best definition i suppose um, you don't want to blast too much, um, but again, like I said, I think that uh, that little pebble texture is probably exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and another little snippet here is I'm going to be building the grain frame um, so I can do the wood grain. Um, that has to be totally constructed from scratch. I'd buy one, but unfortunately, uh, what they sell will not fit in my cabinet. So uh, from here, uh, just get a little blast of air and hopefully it doesn't blow away. And from there, the only thing that uh, that I would do is um, just grab the jigsaw, and it doesn't have to be super perfect, and what I did with the other one is I just took the jigsaw and I used this outside line and I cut that out, and then uh, I used my little, my little palm sander down there just to, uh, you know, finish the edges a little bit better, and, um, you know, prime it and uh, well, I'm sorry. Once you get it cut, then I can remove this resist mask and uh, go ahead and get everything primed. But um, yeah, so um, still kind of working on it. But essentially, you know, that's that's kind of the end result there. Um, I think the next video is going to be um, working with the grain frame, or at least maybe I'm going to record how to make one, or at least how I'm going to attempt to make one. So in a nutshell, there's your little sandblasted sign.